Hi guys, this is QA Shahin and today we are going to talk about BDD. This is video part two of a two part video series in which we will, we will talk about TDD and BDD. So if you haven't had a look at the first video, go ahead and quickly check it out. In that video, we talk about TDD and what is TDD and the advantages TDD brings. In this video, we're going to get straight stuck in and talk about BDD. So as a really super quick overview of TDD, in a single sentence, if I were to describe what TDD is, we write a failing test for code that doesn't exist. We go, we implement the code, we come back, we run the test and the test passes. And that's TDD in, in as small of a nutshell as I can describe. So what is BDD? BDD is an acronym that stands for Behavior Driven Development. The whole idea is that you write behaviors which drives your development. Now, now unlike TDD, which effectively forces you to write a failing test first, that concept doesn't really exist with BDD. BDD is more about writing a test that describes a behavior as opposed to forces you to write a behavior that fails that you then go and then you write code for. So let's look at an existing example. So right here, I have a scenario in a feature file. And for this, we'll be using Cucumber because Cucumber is a tool that allows us to really express Gherkin based scenarios. In other words, behaviors much more easily because of the way it works. So it's a good tool to use. So in this instance, we have a feature where we want to just create a cat. And in this instance, all we're doing is creating a cat. If we have a look at the step definition class, we are effectively just mapping those three test steps to a step definition each. And all this is doing is essentially making sure that we have a cat object, which is null at first, and then we create the object, and then we assert the fact that the name that the cat object returns is exactly the same name that we passed in as part of our scenario. So if I quickly run this, then this passes. Now, if you remember in the previous video where we took TDD approach to implement this particular method, i.e. the ability to set the name of the cat after creating it. In this instance, we already have that feature, but we don't have a test for it. So let's go ahead and write the test for it. So all I'm going to say is scenario should be able to change the name of the cat. So I'm going to say given I have an empty cat, when I create it with the name kitty and change it to Sparky, then the name return should be Sparky. So now if I run this particular scenario, it will fail because in this instance, the step definition doesn't exist. However, the code to be able to change the name of the cat does exist. So we're basically writing a behavior for a given application which already exists. So if we run this now, then what we get is a error saying that this particular method doesn't exist, i.e. it wasn't able to find a step definition that matches to this test step. So if we just copy this, and let's just paste it in here and let's just clean this up really quickly. So let's call this name. And what we're going to do is basically say cat.set name to name. So now if we go back and we run this, then this passes without any issues. Again, this behavior was describing an existing behavior. So BDD is the concept of actually 
taken something like this, i.e. taking a very Gherkin-based approach and describing your functionality and then writing a test for it. Now, if you've seen the previous video, then you know what TDD is. TDD is actually writing a test for a given feature that doesn't exist. BDD is writing a behavior for code that may or may not exist. To get the best of both worlds, i.e. when we write a behavior, it's usually to bridge the gap between those who understand code and those who do not, i.e. the assumption is that someone like a product owner or end clients or business analysts would be much more comfortable understanding this than say understanding this. When you want to combine BDD with TDD, it gives benefits to both the clients as well as the developers. In other words, everyone gets value out of it. How so? Well, you can very easily ask people such as BAs, people such as say manual testers who, who don't know how to automate, or even if you have the luxury to ask your actual customers and clients to come and write their scenarios. And if they write the scenarios, then as long as you're there with them when they're writing the scenarios, then the ambiguity of the scenarios is almost diminished to, to nothing. In the, the ambiguity level between each scenario is reduced because you have both people who understand code as well as people who know what they want and they ask you for it. So when they write the scenarios, then it's a lot easier to understand. So let's say that you are now in a room. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you are a QA and you're in a room with a business analyst and they say that they want the cat to be now able to set the age. So they want to be able to set the age of the cat. Okay. So at this point, it doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a quick scenario for it. So let's say should be able to set the age of the cat. So we say something like given I have a empty cat, when I create it with the name and I set the age to 10, then the age returned should be 10. So now notice that we actually have two steps that do not match up alongside the fact that the code for it also doesn't exist. So this is where you get into BDD and TDD working together in synergy. So if I run this, then I can see that both the final two steps have failed because they just do not exist. So if I now copy this into the step definition class, and what I'll do is, instead of just getting rid of these pending exceptions, this time I'll actually import them in. What will happen now is if I run it now, then what should happen is now the scenario, as far as the scenario is concerned, is fine. It's able to identify each test step to a step definition. However, it will still complain saying that these test steps have not been defined yet. Or in other words, they haven't been fully implemented because we're throwing pending exceptions. So let's do that. So in this instance, I want to be able to set the age. So let's just say age. And to keep it simple, let's just leave it as a string for now. What I want to do is I want to do something like cat dot set age and I have age. So now if I run this, it will obviously fail because this particular method doesn't exist. But that's the whole point. You want to get to the point where you keep on running the test and you slowly, slowly get the test to pass at each increment at each stage because that gives you a good guideline that you are implementing exactly what you've been asked to implement by your clients. So in this case, we want to be able to set the age. So if I say 
So if I go back to my cat object and I say something like public void set age, and it's going to be a string age, and I'll say something like this dot age is equal to age. I now, because this method didn't exist, as of writing this method, I now know that I need to introduce a variable in the class also. Okay, so now notice this is now happy. So now if I run this scenario again, I can see that now a little bit more of it is passing. So that means that this behavior that we were told to implement is getting closer and closer to what we were asked to implement. So the final thing to do is implement this step here, which is somehow expecting us to assert on the fact that the age return should be 10. So again, let's clean up this method here. So we're going to say age, we're going to get rid of this throwable. And we're going to say something like assert true that cat get age. equals age. Again, if we run this, it should fail. Okay, so if we go and implement this method now in the actual object, so we say public string get age return this dot age. So now this isn't complaining anymore. Now, if we run the scenario in the future, it all passes. So this is the beauty of combining BDD with TDD. In other words, you write your behavior first. Ideally, you write your behavior with someone that actually understands the requirement, someone like a BA or a product owner or a proxy product owner and someone that understands exactly what to deliver and you get someone from a very technical background could be an SDET, could be a QA, could be a developer for them both to sit down and write the scenarios together once the scenarios have been written you know exactly what to implement you then go out and you go and implement the step definitions as well as updating your main code all the way to the point where your scenarios actually start to pass. There's no silver bullet. Some scenarios may pass instantly by implementing one step, and some scenarios may not pass at all because the code just doesn't exist yet. So this is what you get by following BDD and TDD. You get a lot of advantages. The biggest drawback is that this takes a little bit longer than just going ahead and implementing the code right away and then doing the test. Effectively, what we were doing in this and the previous video, but in reverse order. However, the pros outweigh the cons. The pros are that, first of all, you get a set of requirements which are concrete. They are exactly what the client or the product owner expects them to be. They won't suddenly change. If your requirements change, then your tests change. And if your requirements do not change, then your tests do not change. Why? Because your tests are your requirements. Your tests aren't being plucked from thin air. They actually came from someone who knows exactly how the system is supposed to behave. The second advantage is that because you've written your scenarios first, that is forcing you to expose all the code you write in a very testing friendly manner which means everything at some point becomes testable and easy to test and finally assuming that you followed this pattern of writing your test or your scenario or your feature or your behavior first followed by the code means that whenever you actually write your feature your scenario your behavior whatever it is when you write it first you're already defining what the application is supposed to do so it doesn't leave any room for ambiguity so in the second video we discussed what is BDD and we compared BDD and TDD 
and the real value isn't on a versus scale. It's not about BDD versus TDD. It is more about BDD with TDD. You get a lot of value by combining both processes into a single process and then using both of them to actually drive development. By doing this, you slowly start to build up a number of tests which aren't tests but they actually are more your requirements for your application and they only change if your application changes the other obvious benefits you get is that if your tests fail then you know that a requirement has broken somewhere as opposed to something has broken somewhere anyway thanks a lot for watching this video i'll see you in the next one